So the word of God is like fire. And so listen to this in Leviticus 6, 12, and 13. It says that the fire on the altar shall be kept burning, and it shall not be allowed to go out. Well, our heart is the altar of the Lord. We have God. It's our responsibility to keep that fire burning. Listen, God has called us to be passionate warriors for Jesus Christ. We are not just this passive, passive people. I mean, you can be. That's your choice. But going to church once a week and doing your thing. That's Listen, God is saying right now he's calling the passionate warriors, the fire-burning, breathing Christians to rise up. Because the world needs passion. They need to see the miracle-working power of God. That's for all of us. Every place that you are in, in company with, you have that ability to cause that breaker to break out and change the atmosphere wherever we're at. We need this. We have got to rise up. We have got to all press in. When we're all coming together, it's all the different anointings, all what you've experienced that causes that combustion of fire, the combustion of his glory to come and break through. We need each other. That's why it was so diabolical how the enemy tried to shut us all down and prevent us in the name of, of pre, you know, from not getting COVID. It sounded like a real noble thing, but this was a demonic setup to keep people isolated, keep people held back. And so, my God, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't re right, real. And initially, we have uh, family members that are in science, that are working. We, uh, you know, COVID nurses, and se et cetera. It's not like it was. They know now what to do. We have medicine that helps us, okay? We're not all going to die. We have medicine that helps us. There's, there's a lot of different things, and I can send you tons of information on it. Do we have to be careful? I'm not saying be, you know, silly. You, got, you have to do what's right for you, but we're good. All right? And so things have shifted. And so, but see, again, we've got to get before the Lord. What is the Spirit of God saying to you? I want that fire burning. I don't want it to be a dim light. And what is that? How do we develop that passion? It, it comes through. Part of it is meditation. We're, we're going to be talking about prayer. We're going to be talking about the armor of God. We're going to be talking about worship. All of that is combined. But if you don't know what the Word is saying, how are, it's, it's, our, it's our guidepost. How are we going to know how to move forward? How do we know what the world is saying versus what God is saying? God's word has to have final say. So, all right, let me see if I can get this. All right, in Jesus' name. There we go. All right. Um, I learned quick. So uh, the next scripture here, I, I typed it out in the Amplified. It says, the fire in the altar shall be kept burning. It shall not be allowed to go out. I just read that. Now here, the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Who's the priest? Us. What's the wood? The word. And he shall arrange the burnt offering on it and offer the fat portions of the peace offerings up in smoke. The fire shall burn, be burning continually on the altar. It shall not be allowed to go out. Never. We can never allow this fire to go out. And so I know in times past it has. I, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. It, the fire went out in my heart a while ago. And, and when it did, it was bad. I became very passive. And, and what wasn't I doing? I wasn't in the Word. I mean, listen, I heard the Word. I would hear a scripture. I wasn't in sin. But what I did was I withdrew. I, there was disappointments. We all get disappointed, Right. And I thought, you know what, oh, God. And so that's just what the enemy, and I just pulled back. And I had pulled back, and it was ever so slowly. And, and I became really passive, and the Lord really had to deal with me on this. And, um, you know, and I repented for it. I mean, you know, listen, God loves us so much. He's not looking to beat us over the head with a hammer. He's looking to bring us into that place of his fruitfulness. He wants us to be fruitful people. And so... You know, I had to, I had to really readjust and, and repent. I, I had to forgive the Lord. I was upset with him over certain things like, why, you know? And then I just knew that that's not a good question to ask him. I just needed to just say, Lord, I choose to trust you no matter what, right? I choose to trust you with all my heart. And uh, so I just had to, I said, Lord, I want that fire again. I want, I want to be infused with your holy presence. I love, I, I, I've been hot. And I've been cold for the Lord. It's much better to be hot. It's much better to be passionate for Jesus, trust me. Because when you're in that place of indifference and passivity, it stinks. 
It really is. So I had to learn. I had to get back in that place. Fire is a purifier. I said, Lord, purify my heart. You know, I, I know that your word drives out darkness. Your word sets us free. Your word brings light. It illuminates me. It gives me wisdom. See, we believe in deliverance here, and we pray for deliverance, and, and we believe that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. But let me tell you something. When you meditate on the word and you get a revelation and you're in union with the word, you talk about liberty. You talk about breakthrough. He does not want us to know who we are in Christ. He doesn't want us to know the authority that we truly have as children of God. He doesn't want us to know that the voice of the Lord thunders and that we can release the word of the Lord and that we can create and cause things to shatter in faith. He doesn't want us to recognize that. So what does he do? He keeps us in a place of despair, hopelessness, where we're just focused on our problems, where we're not meditating on the word. We're not in that intimate place worshiping Jesus. See, that's what would what, what cause us to be ineffective. And God is saying, no more of that. Worship me. Get, keep your eyes fixed upon me. Keep your eyes, you know, declaring the word. Declare the word. Because we are dread champions. That's what the Bible says in Jeremiah. He says, I've called you to be dread champions. And that's not just for any, meeny, miny, mo group of people. That's for all of us. And man, when you're flowing in, in the assignment that God has for you, oh my gosh, talk about the strength and the joy of God. Talk about being that conqueror and doing more than you ever thought you can do. It's for us and our family, but it's for out there. I used to minister all the time in, in prisons and, and go out and minister to those that didn't know Jesus who were rotten and mean to you when you spoke to them. But they God still got a hold of them. That's the power of the word. And so Jesus is encouraging us now to have that zeal. The zeal of the Lord has consumed me. In another scripture in Jeremiah 29 in the NIV, it says, His word is in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones. See, that's what has to happen. The word has to be shut up in our bones. And that's where I'm at. And that's what the Lord's saying to me. He's saying, listen, I want you to allow the word to, have, to be speaking to you daily. Speaking to you daily. No matter what you're at, no matter what you're going through, you get afraid, you hear something. What's the word that comes out? Well, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of sound mind. You're gonna let, what, are you going to let the fear and doubt drown you out or the word take authority over it? So I, I typed out a bunch of scriptures here um, that have to do with uh, the word and fear and all this other stuff. Okay. So in 2 Timothy 1.6, we, um, we're all familiar with this. It says, this is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that's in you by means of laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. It's up to us to stir up the fire, to stir up the flame. Now, when Timothy, when Paul spoke this to Timothy, he was going through the most difficult of times. Listen, the Roman government, they were after the Christians, looking to kill them to destroy them if they stood for their faith. And Paul spoke to him and said, stir up your faith. Listen, we need to stir up our faith now. We cannot be in passivity. I'm telling you, God is saying to us, we must prepare for what's ahead. And I'm not trying to scare you. God has given us a plan. He never leaves us nor forsake us, but stir it up. He's saying, stir up, rekindle the embers of your flame, rekindle the embers of, of the fire within you. Don't allow the word to become dormant. Decree the word, worship the word, sing the word. It's powerful. Yeah. So in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We need guidance, right? It's the word. You have a lamp, and you, you put the lamp there. If you're all dark, it's all dark. It, it shows you the path in which to go, right. right? It gives us instruction. It gives us direction. That's what the word of God does. The word sets our heart on fire. It does. It's one of the things that sets our heart on fire. So God wants us to be passionate, full of zeal, dedicated, perseverance. He wants the word ignited within us. And we, he wants us to be consumed by his word.